Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Safari Mac Explores North America. I'm Safari Mac, your guide and host, helping you make connections to the wild. Boy, I tell you what, am I glad that we're out of New York City because those Peregrine Falcons truly meant business. Like I said, when they look you in the eye, they are not getting around. Today, we are moving from New York City and we are going into the state of Vermont to uncover one of the most industrial of all animals in North America, the American beaver, otherwise known as Castor canadensis. But now before we begin, as always, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you can stay tuned in for more special content. Check out my Facebook page so that you can see special conservation messages as well as updates from projects all over the world. And as always, if you have questions or if there's an animal that you want me to cover in the future, be sure to send me an email, which you'll find the, li the link down in the description below. But if you're ready, I'm ready, let's begin. First of all, I know we always start with the evolution of the family, but today I'm going to skip one thing just for the sake of my viewers, because I know there are some out there that may not like this creature. Now, I'm not talking about beavers, but I'm talking about rodents, because beavers are part of the rodent family. So we're going to skip the evolution of the rodent, and we're just going to move on to the evolution of the beaver itself. So beavers are the only member of the Castoridae family, and, this in, uh, and their features include five t clawed front feet with five toes, webbed back feet, a large flat scaly-like tail, and a large rounded body, and of course those gigantic large front teeth or incisors. Now, the Castoridae are thought to have originated back in North America somewhere around three th 33 million years ago and would actually cross over from North America to Asia across the Bering Sea land bridge. Now, over time, the beaver that we know of today is thought to have originated somewhere in Eurasia 7.5 million years ago and then they would make their way across the land bridge again to become the creatures that we know today living in North America. But believe it or not, the modern day beaver that we know of actually shared its home with another kind of beaver, which was a heck of a lot bigger. As you can see, this is the giant beaver, Castoridae's Ojo. Ohio onensis. I, I can't say it right right now. But this beaver was almost thought to be as tall, as big as a man, but because of special habitats, as well as the changes that followed, this creature couldn't really adapt too well, and as a result, died out. The modern beaver, of course, managed to survive and became the animal that we know of today. Now, as we go into their habitat and family life, I thought I'd, show a couple, th thought I'd share with you something pretty special. So this beef, the North American beaver, actually has a cousin living in Europe. So here I thought you'd like to see a little bit of the difference between the two. So have you got it? Good. So now let's talk, let's get back to North America. Now even before the Europeans came and started exploring and settling all of the United States, beavers were thought to be almost all over the place in North America, except for maybe the southern part of Florida as well as the desert regions. So these creatures obviously have managed to make a real good living up for themselves thanks to their hard work ethic. So as you can see this beaver, beavers in general are known for chopping down trees that that they use the giant branches and twigs for to make their for, their forever homes. Not really their dams, which I'm spelling it as D-A-M and not the curse word, or their lodges. We'll sh I'll show you the lodges for a minute. But first, let's talk a little bit about why they're building this. As you can see, bears and wolves are often a beaver's greatest enemy. So it's in so they're building these these dams as a way of protection to keep the bears and the wolves away as they don't really want to be swimming after them too much. But really, why are why is this it's got to be more than just protection. So, as they as we know, beavers ultimately can change the landscape around them. And the reason why they build lodges or these dams is that this is their perfect way of how they build their lodges. So here you can see in this diagram that the water level has to be high enough so that the bear 
has to has to be high enough so that bears and wolves don't really want to go after them, even if they really are determined. But also, it has to be deep enough for these creatures to be able to dive under as they make their entryways close to the bottom. That way, they can swim up to the um, t to their lair or their nest and feel safe. So now, let's move on to family life. Being a beaver, they are monogamous. And monogamous means that they only mate with one other partner for life. That is, of course, unless one of the partners gets killed. So now, after a gestation period of around three to four months, beavers usually, in the springtime, give birth. A mom will give birth to around three to four kits at a time. So while mom is looking after the offspring, dad is busy marking the family's territory as well as gathering more food. Now, by the time that a beaver is either a year and a half or around three years, that's how old they are when they're ready to go off on their own and build their own family lives. I tell you what, all this construction project is making me hungry. Let's see what's on the menu. Uh, for, for these construction workers taking the fire for lunch, what do they got? Vegetation. Basically, beavers are, are, herbiv are strictly herbivores. They only eat plants, no other animals, not even little byproducts of animals. So, but it's not just twigs, it's not just trees that they're eating, but beavers are known to eat grass, leaves, twigs, and bark. During times of plenty, they'll eat around 4.4 pounds of food, while during the winter time, they'll usually eat around only two pounds of food a day. Now, right now in the winter, it seems like it's kind of hard to get all that food, especially with the ground covered with snow. But thanks to their industrial and, industrial and hard work ethic, the beavers came prepared this winter. How so? So, during the summer and the fall, beavers were, were out and about, even during the night, they were cutting down trees to chew off, different, chew off branches and twigs from the trees to bring to their lodges. But how do they do this? And what's their strategy? It's actually a really good efficiency. So the beavers ultimately take these giant branches back to, with them to their ponds. But then as the winter begins to progress and when the ice begins to freeze over, the beavers were able to, are able to survive the winter thanks to the cold water being able to act as a kind of refrigerator for their food, keeping it nice and fresh and available for not just not just for each other, but for other beavers within the area. So, talk, like I said, talk about efficiency. Now, finally, let's finish today's part one episode with their influences in the in human cultures. So, in North America, beavers have been symbolized as hard workers and also determination and a kind of unity. They are greatly admired for their industrious nature of building dams and lodges, which, em which embodies the idea of perseverance and hard work. But there's more to that than just North America, the Native American's representation. In Canada, the beaver is ultimately revered as the national animal, and even in literature they've been famous. Clive Staple Lewis, or C.S. Lewis as we know it, from his stories of the Chronicles of Narnia, in his first book he featured two beavers that led four children from Britain, the Pevensies, to find the great lion Aslan and ultimately take, take their place as the rightful kings and queens of, of the mythical land of Narnia. But there's even more to that, and this one I find to be the most strange, but I have been here myself. There's even now a, a, a quickly rising and popular res, um, gas station slash country store called Bucky's. Some people, many people who have been to these places, they will tell you it's ultimately like a Disney World, but in the form of a gas station. I don't fully get it myself, but you know what? I'll take their word for it because I have been in there and it is pretty cool. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid that's all the time I have for today's episode, but be sure to join me next week as we continue to uncover the world of the hardworking beaver. And until then, this is Safari Mac, and I'll see you all out there in Vermont.